Uh, hi everybody, my name is uh, Colleen Osnes and in this presentation I will give a short overview of my PhD work. And the PhD project was titled Monolithic and Laminated Glass under Extreme Loading, Experiments, Modeling and Simulations. So I finished my PhD in November 2019 at Simlab NTNU in Norway and my supervisors were Professor Tore Bøvik and Professor Oddsture Håperstad. So one of the main motivations behind this PhD project was that the use of glass in buildings has increased drastically the last decade. We use more glass in buildings for more and more demanding applications. And this leads to more complicated glass design than what we are used to. Lately, there has also been an increased focus on the threats posed to buildings by terrorist attacks. And these attacks can expose buildings to extreme loading such as blast or impact loading. And if we need to take this into account, the design of glass structures gets even more, oh sorry, <coughs> more uh, complicated. Uh, so these two motivating factors leads to a demand for models that can predict the behavior of glass under extreme loading. So that was one of the objectives of my thesis. Uh, we wish to develop numerical models that could lead to more predictive glass design. And by using such numerical models, we can reduce the need for experimental testing. The other objective of my thesis was to perform experiments. And this was done to study the mechanical behavior of the materials and also to validate the numerical models by comparing the results to the experiments. So the type of glass that we studied during my PhD were monolithic glass, which is a single plate of glass, and also laminated glass. And laminated glass is a layered component that consists of at least two glass plates and a polymer interlayer. So these layers are then bonded together through a process that includes heat and pressure. So for monolithic glass, fracture initiation will typically induce total failure of the entire plate, and it will also create large glass fragments. Laminated glass can still carry loads after the glass has fractured, and this is because the glass fragments will be attached to the polymer interlayer. So the difference between these two glass types under loading can be illustrated by these videos. So here both glass plates are exposed to blast loading and we see that the monolithic glass creates large and dangerous glass fragments and for the laminated glass the fragments are held back by the interlayer. We also see that the glass breaks into much smaller fragments and we also see that we get some delamination, so detachment of glass fragments, but these are very small and very few. So from these videos, we see that laminated glass is a much safer solution and is therefore often used in blast design. So for this thesis, we studied uh, one type of glass material and one type of polymer material. And the polymer that we studied was PVB, and this is the most common polymer used in laminated glass. The glass material that we studied was annealed soda lime silica float glass, and this is the most common glass material for windows. So glass is a very brittle material, and it has a linear elastic material behavior. Glass has also a stochastic fracture behavior, and that means that the fracture strength will vary. So the reason for this variation is microscopic flaws which are located on the surface of the glass. And what happens is that fracture initiates in these flaws, and this is because stresses will increase or amplify around the flaws. So exactly when fracture initiates can be found from this criterion, and this is valid for quasi-static loading conditions. So K1 is the stress intensity factor for mode one loading, and it describes the stress state close to a flaw. If this factor reaches a critical value, the fracture toughness, the flaw will start to grow very unstably, and we will typically get failure of the entire glass plate. 
And since glass plates never have the same set of flaws, the fracture strength will vary, or in other words, glass will have a probabilistic fracture strength. So during my PhD, we performed a lot of different experiments. We performed quasi-static and dynamic tests, both bending, pressure, impact, and ballistic impact tests. And we got two main conclusions from these experiments. First off, that the probabilistic fracture strength of glass depends on the loading situation, the boundary conditions, the geometry, and the loading rate. Also, the post-fracture behavior of glass uh, depends on the time and position of fracture initiation. So I will show you an example of this last conclusion, and I will here present two blast tests on laminated glass, and both of these plates were exposed to exactly the same blast pressure. And this is the blast pressure that is uh, shown in this uh, figure to the right. And this shows the fracture process of the two different laminated glass plates. So now in the figure to the right, I've included the center displacement of both of the plates. In the test that is uh, presented in orange, it has a 30% less maximum displacement compared to the other one, which is shown in blue. And one of the biggest reasons for this difference is the fracture initiation in the glass. So the orange test fracture initiates later and it takes longer for the second plate in the laminated glass to fracture. Also, fracture initiation occurs further from the midpoint compared to the other tests. Then over to the modeling part of the PhD, and this part has been divided into two. For the first part, the goal was to estimate the probabilistic fracture strength of glass. So the main focus here was the fracture initiation. For the second part, we focused on what happens after initiation, so the post-fracture behavior. For the first part, we developed a model that we have called the strength prediction model or the SBM. And the goal of this model is to predict the probabilistic fracture strength under arbitrary loading conditions. The basis is that fracture initiates in microscopic surface flaws. And what we do in this model is that we perform virtual experiments in a Monte Carlo simulation. So we combine information about artificial surface flaws and stresses in a glass. And the stresses can we get from a finite element simulation or an analytical solution. Then we check the fracture criterion that I presented earlier in all of the different flaws over the entire stress history. And then we output the relevant fracture information if we get fracture in one of the virtual experiments. And we have to do many virtual experiments to get a proper failure distribution. So I mentioned before that the fracture strength of glass changes with the loading rate. So we also wanted to include this effect in the strength prediction model. So to include rate dependency, we chose to introduce a dynamic fracture toughness, which depends on the strain rate. And this is shown in the yellow box. All right, so the output that we can get from this SPM model is the fracture strength distribution in terms of, for example, the stress, the fracture time, or the load. And we can also get a map of the position of fracture initiation. All right, then I will show you an example of results from the strength prediction model. And first we did some experiments so that we had something to compare the SBM results with. And these experiments are quasi-static punch tests on monolithic glass. So the glass were clamped uh, between thick aluminum plates and rubber on each side, and the plates were loaded at three different loading rates with a flat wooden impactor, and we tested 30 plates for each loading rate. And the experimental results are as follows. First off, this figure shows the uh, first displacement curve of all the different tests. And we see that we got a large variation in the fracture force and it ranged from 590 to 6,200 Newton. 
We also saw that the fracture force increased with the loading rate, and this is shown by these three different box plots. Also, we saw that the position of fracture initiation varied. So most of the uh, plates were uh, fractured around the center, but also we got some fracture initiation outside the center. And these are shown by the red dots. Right, then over to the SBM results. And these box plots compare then the fracture force from the experiments and the predictions from the strength prediction model. So the SBM uh, results are shown in gray. And we see here then that the model is able to recreate most of the experimental values. And we also see that it can predict an increase in the fracture force with the loading rate. Also, the predicted positions of fracture initiation corresponds well with the test. So the test results are here shown in red and the model of results in blue. Yes, so I can also mention that the SPM has also been adopted by one car manufacturer for design of the roof strength test. And the roof strength test is a test that determines a car's capacity at a rollover. And this capacity is very dependent on the fracture strength of the glass in a windshield. Then I will go quickly through the second part of the modeling, simulations of the post fracture behavior. So here we have used finite element simulations. And we have used several different solvers, but for this part, I will focus on simulations where we use the finite element code impetus. So this solver has some special features, including node splitting and higher order elements. And node splitting is an alternative to element erosion and can describe fracture and crack propagation by separating elements instead of deleting them. And higher order elements can provide extra robustness. So then I will show you some examples of finite element simulations. And for this, I have simulated these two blast tests. So one test on monolithic and one on laminated glass. So in the finite element simulations, we model the glass as linear elastic with a brittle failure criterion. And the glass also consisted of pentahedron elements. And a polymer layer was modeled with a viscoelastic model and it was merged then to the glass. And we also included a delamination criterion. And then we also used node splitting and higher order elements. So then I will start off with the monolithic test and I have only included a qualitative comparison between the simulations and the tests here. So here is the video. Uh, and we see here that the simulation recreates many of the mechanisms uh, that we saw in the experiments. So we get crack branching from the initiation point, and we also are able to describe these long and very large free flying fragments. Now for the laminated glass test, and here you can see the comparison. And Again, we see that the mechanisms are the same in the test and the simulation. Uh, we get a, quite a similar fracture pattern with diagonal cracks towards the boundaries and very fine cracking of the glass. And we also are able to describe this detachment or delamination of some of these small glass fragments from the PVB. Then over to the main conclusions of the PhD. The experiments that we performed uh, demonstrated a stochastic fracture behavior that was dependent on the plate geometry, the loading conditions, and the loading rates. And we also saw that the post-fracture behavior is very dependent on the fracture initiation in the glass. Also, we saw that the strength prediction model can contribute to more predictive glass design and also that finite element simulations that use node splitting uh, are able to recreate mechanisms that we saw in the BLAST experiments. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>